Welcome to another video tutorial from Captivate, the world's only growth oriented podcast host. In today's video, I'm going to teach you a little bit about what Zapier is and how you can get started automating your podcasting process with Captivate's new podcast integration with Zapier. So running a podcast can be a lot of work, you know, there's research, guests, recording, editing, marketing, there's loads of spinning wheels. But with Captivate's integration with Zapier, you can start to automate some of this process and those manual jobs and admin tasks that you can just get rid of and focus on creating great content. Whether that's automatically uploading episodes or sending emails to your subscribers when a new episode is published, Zapier and Captivate can help you to do this. So let's get started and I'll show you around Zapier's dashboard and how we can create our first Zap together. For more video tutorials like this, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, give us a like or comment down below and we'll see how we can help. Okay, so here we are on the Zapier homepage. And you can see down the left hand side, there's an option to make a zap. And then we've got the dashboard add zaps, which lists off all our automations that we've got set up currently. We've got our apps, which list all our apps that we have connected to Zapier. Then we have our task history, which tells us how many times our zaps have been fired. Then we have the explore tab, which allows us to browse the template library of zaps. As you can see here, there's some preset workflows that you can copy and amend yourself. And then down here, we've got the ability to browse the entire Zap library. So here we've got stacks and stacks and stacks of apps and software and services. And all of these talk to each other through Zapier. So we're gonna go ahead and click create Zap. And then we're brought to this page. So you can give your Zap a name, here is the toggle to turn it on and off when it's been tested. Here you can share it. And then we've got a series of kind of choices down here. So there's the outline so you can see it in a list form. We've got the guide for any help. Here's where any errors will pop up when you're testing. Here's your settings where you can name your zap, add it to a specific folder, give it a description and even choose a time zone. So if for example, you're in Australia and your co-host is in America, you can set time specific um, zaps, which is helpful. So back to the main screen and we're going to set up our zap now. We are going to set up a really simple zap, which will send us a Slack message whenever a new episode in Captivate has been scheduled. So this will help us get ahead with any promotion and any scheduling that we need to do around our new episode. And we can also set the Slack message up to send to our co-host or any guests to let them know to be on the lookout for when the episode goes live. So we're going to name our zap here. And now it's time to choose our trigger. So a trigger is an event that starts the zap. So in this case, our zap is going to be triggered by an episode being scheduled in Captivate. So here we're going to search for Captivate here, select it. And then our trigger event, what starts the zap is on the change of episode status. So here you can see triggers when an episode is published, scheduled or deleted. Continue. Then we're gonna choose our Captivate account. So I've already authenticated my account, but if you haven't authenticated your account, here you'll get prompted to log into your Captivate account. And it's just a couple of clicks to link it up. Then click continue. And here we can customize our episode status. So when the episode status changes to scheduled, for the podcast accelerator, that is when our event is going to be triggered. So continue. Then it's gonna to need to test the trigger. So it's going to want to find some data. So here it's going to just find a recent episode status in your Captivate account to confirm that the right account is connected and your trigger is set up correctly. So we're gonna click test. And here it is, they found some data, which means that the test has been successful. And then we can move on to choosing our action. So the action is something that you want Zapier to perform for you. So in this instance, it's sending a Slack message. So here we're gonna choose Slack, and then we are going to choose to send a direct message. So this is a message just for me. I could choose to send a channel message if I've got a specific podcast channel. I could set up a reminder here. 
I could set a private channel message or I could even update a profile or my status when a new episode is scheduled. And here again, I'm going to select my account, which I've already authenticated. I don't want it to send to multiple users, just myself. Here, I'm gonna enter my username. So here I can set myself a little message and it's gonna give me several data fields that I can use to populate my message. Then there's some other options such as send as a bot and then you can also schedule it ahead of time too. And now it's gonna send me a test message to my Slack channel. So I'm gonna click test and continue. And then I can see that I've got a new Zapier message telling me that my episode has been scheduled. So that is a successful zap. So here I can turn the zap on and my zap is now activated. That means every time an episode is scheduled for the podcast accelerator, I'm going to receive a Slack message. So there we have it guys, that's how Zapier works and that's how to set up your first zap template. I hope that you have a great time automating your podcasting workflow and that it really speeds things up for you and allows you to focus on the more creative and engaging parts of podcasting. And if you get to grips with Zapier and if you find out that you've got some ingenious ways to use it, please let me know. I'd love to hear about them. Leave me a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.